just the back and forth momentum oh. swap that there's a big rock here comes Romero oh. but a pull counter there Bang! we go we have there it a is. champion ladies and gentlemen so Yours. on this UFC fight night for this week then we obviously have Robert Whitaker taking on Ikaran Skirov on short notice I'm pretty sure I butchered that but whatever co-main event we have Alexander Volkov versus Sergey Pavlovich, which is that fight's gonna be that stylistically that fight is going to be really really solid, especially with the way that Sergey fights. Sergey fights, excuse me. And then we have Kelvin Gastelum fighting against Daniel Rodriguez right before that co-main event, and that's a super important fight for Kelvin Gastelum to win because Kelvin Gastelum throughout his career. Just just to give you a point where like the expectations were for Kelvin Gastelum's career. Oh, that was lame. Um, for Kelvin Gastelum, he had lost a split decision to Tyron Woodley. I think that was his first ever loss. A split decision to the man that would then go on, right? He would then go on to fight Robbie Lawler. And what did Tyron Woodley end up doing? Tyron Woodley ended up winning the title, knocking out Robbie Lawler in round one. So it's crazy to think that after his first loss in uh, MMA... His, the person that beat him ended up fighting for a title. So it, it only seemed like for uh, for Kelvin Gaslam that was just a matter of time before he would have the belt. That was just not the case. He, he's had some struggles. He had a really great run in middleweight, but I had said for quite some time that Kelvin should have always stayed at welterweight. Part of probably why he was having a hard time making welterweight was, like, like any other thing, you know, discipline. Dis discipline can play a big, big factor. Whether a fighter likes to admit it or not, I know it, especially coaching wrestling, going through wrestling, having bad weight cuts myself. It usually comes down to discipline because he's back down and well to weight later in his career at the age of, believe it or not, 32. So he's still relatively young, but you wonder if he's already capped his ceiling. He has a lot of good things in his skill set, trying to utilize him against his Nate, who's another fellow four star in this division who's super solid. Good calf kicks, good wrestling. Although the jiu-jitsu of Nate Diaz is making me just not necessarily hesitant, but I don't want to shoot into something stupid. So we'll keep working our nice high-level snap jabs and the crosses, left hooks. Basically the Kelvin Gaslam stable. But I would definitely tell y'all, y'all should really tune in to the fight night this weekend. It's a super, super... It's a, it's a really underrated <laughs> fight night card. Comparison to the last one that we had, yeah, it's significantly better than that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, here we have 30 seconds left. Nah, I'm not going to pursue it. Notice how I'm, I'm cutting this Nate Diaz off. He keeps hard circling to my power side for whatever reason. I'm just going to take it down. This is secure the round, but that's usually what ends up happening. Like a person when they're when they're playing on the back foot, notice that they're not going straight backwards. They're circling to one specific side, and then they're waiting and they're looking to plant. But that's gonna be definitely our round. Now, one issue for Kelvin Gastelum is you never know what version of Kelvin Gastelum you're going to get. If there's anything I would love to see Kelvin Gastelum develop, is instead of being more wrestler jitsu, I think developing his grappling into more submission threats, not just wrestling somebody to a position and then opportunistically getting finishes. I mean, he has four submission wins on his record, rear naked chokes and whatnot, and a Kimura win in his record too. That was all the way back in Mexico, if I recall correctly, but not that it matters. But at that time, like, for example, when he fought against, uh, I'm trying to recall his name, Ian Heinish, that fight, he showcased his wrestling really well. Well-timed, well, well-timed well uh, takedowns. Okay, it's getting weird here. Well-timed takedowns. Ate a freaking knee, if I recall correctly. There you go. I just looked extremely solid. And that was after a uh, three-fight... Oh, my... Jesus! Somebody in this man's house is downloading porn. So this was this was perfectly fine round one. Tell tell your younger sibling to stop watching the bad stuff. It's messing with our damn fight. Oh my lord. Yeah, sick man. Ah. Anywho. 
Like, Kelvin Gastelum was on a three-fight losing streak, right? He got that win against Ian Heinish. Prior to that, let's see, I think uh, he had lost to Israel Adesanya, then a split decision against Darren Till. And then, I think a prime example of what I'm talking about was uh, positional recognition when somebody's trying to attack, like, his legs. Jack Hermanson, he, I think he lap-dropped Jack Hermanson. He had a moment where he could have just disengaged the line back up, tried to continue to pressure forward, etc., and end up getting caught, etc. Got he hooked. Right, and that's just more so not getting those type of reps in those positions because a lot of times what happens with people that come from wrestling backgrounds, I'm gonna press. When we go and learn, oh, that makes no fucking sense. And when we go and learn jujitsu, sometimes they just learn. Okay, I just don't want to get caught in these positions, so I'm just going to avoid it and be real cagey, and not really grapple. And that comes back to hurt us when we go against people who <laughs> come on now. When we go against people who are just as good as us wrestling wise, and they have better jujitsu, a prime example of that would be for Kelvin Gastelum after he beat Ian Heinish. Fucking camera angle. We're gonna have to posture to fix this. Yeah, let's go mount. Let's see if we can get something going here. Okay. So for like, for example, Robert Whitaker, right? Freestyle wrestler. He's a freestyle wrestler on top of being a very, very solid karateka. He won a national title over in Australia. So he's pretty, pretty good wrestling. Very, very good defensive wrestling too. We saw that against Yoel Romero. And if I recall correctly, he's also a black belt Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And if there's anything that you learn with jiu-jitsu, especially if you learn with the right people, you learn how to pin people. And I'm not talking about a wrestling pin where you're like, Pin somebody down to the mat for like two for like a second or two and how the fuck did I not get that? Okay. EA Sports is in the game. Anyway, you learn how to pin somebody for a certain duration of time. You learn those like little mechanical details. And we saw Robert Whitaker doing a lot of that to Kelvin Gaslam. He was taking him down with a nice single leg and able to hold him down until Kelvin Gaslam was then able to work his way back up to his feet. But once once uh, Robert Whitaker was able to get his takedowns on him, it really uh, the fight just started running away from Kelvin. So what's Kelvin to do against Daniel Rodriguez? No touch. Okay. Well, for Daniel Rodriguez, we saw that I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Daniel Rodriguez is coming off of that loss to Ian Gary. Prior to that, I think he also lost to uh, Neil Magny via Darshok. Calvin Gaslam, Neil Magny, they fought the split decision, but that was years ago. Could be. I don't know. I, I don't know. This is a fight that Kelvin should really win. I don't know if he's going to finish Dan Daniel Rodriguez. Sometimes after uh, somebody gets finished twice back-to-back, -back, they tend to be harder to finish. They tend to shore up their uh, defensive tendencies a little bit more. So I, can, I really feel confident in Kelvin's ability to kind of dictate the pace of the fight. My only thing is if we're going to see anything new from him. If we don't see anything new from him, then it's going to be the same song and dance where he's going to look fantastic. The same way that he looked against uh, Chris Curtis in middleweight before uh, dropping back down to the welterweight division. There we go. Should have got that last round. Oh, our short-term stamina is low, though. It's not good. Ooh. All right. Spoke this into existence, huh? Yeah, I think that, uh... Ooh. <laughs> no. Is there... There we go. I think that Kelvin's probably going to win a decision over Daniel Rodriguez... If anything, I think he, he should really win that bout. I think he is the better fighter. But what I really want to see is something new from Kelvin Gaslam. I don't want to see him kind of falling back to what usually works for him. Right? It's a lot of stuff that's based off bouncing a little bit on the outside. He bounces like two or three times and he lunges right in with his left hand. Occasionally he'll work uh, the snap jab really well and then line up his left hand behind his jab. Then the calf kicks are a really nice addition. Big left overhand lands for us right now. Something that Kelvin works. But I really want to see Kelvin Gaslam 
implement some type of like clinch game, some type of clinching, attacking the legs, say non-committal on the takedowns, non-committal leg takedowns. You know, you just make contact with the leg, like look at Marab. Right, you make contact with the leg, you get them to pull back, react as hard as possible, and then you, bam, you hit them. I think if Kelvin's able to do something like that on top of working up on his defenses in jiu-jitsu, I think that he will I think he'll have a lot of success in welterweight, but he still has time. He still has time. And if there's anybody that can still do it for as long as they've been fighting, it's Kelvin Gastelum. Alright. It's a good bout. Good bout. Some good counterboxing. Good counterboxing display. We're, we're going to leave it as a one and done. We should we should take this. We should take this like 30-27. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, we'll, we'll just have this be a one and done. I don't want to showcase him too long because if he goes out there and gets smoked by D-Rod, I think I would be beyond disappointed. Yeah, that's us. You see that animation that fighter won. This is like that clear. All right, y'all. Mara 17, I appreciate y'all. Much love. Take care. And have a wonderful weekend. And enjoy the fights.